a native Arizonan, uh, fifth generation. I was born here in Tucson uh, when my folks were going to the University of Arizona. I uh, was supposed to be a cotton farmer, but that didn't turn out, and so my folks ended up buying a business up in the Prescott area that my mother's family had owned. So uh, grew up in the Prescott area. I'm the oldest of seven children, and my wife and I have been married for 34 years. We have three grown children, and our oldest son is married has three grandchildren, or has, has three children that are our three grandchildren. So um, ran a family business up in the Prescott area called Bennett Oil Company. We sold gasoline and diesel fuel and oil products and things like that. Uh, my degree is in accounting, so I started, well, I actually started out as a truck driver for my dad back when I was a teenager. and then got into the finances and then was the CEO of our company for almost 25 years. Uh, so I know what it's like to make payroll every two weeks for 24 years and um, very familiar with the business world and things like that. But during my, and then for the last eight or nine years when I had to live in the Phoenix area during the time I was Secretary of State, uh, I also served on the board of directors for a cancer hospital there in the Phoenix area. So I know business is kind of small, medium and large and I have a 30 plus year uh, career in business, uh, but I've also served in some public offices. I started out on the city council up in Prescott back in the late 80s when I was just 25 or six years old. Uh, and then later I served in the state senate and then for the past six years I served as secretary of state for the state of Arizona. Okay, um, and for this particular election, um, it's really a battleground district. What mm -hmm. does this mean um, for voters if they elect you? Well, this is one of the few districts in the entire country out of 435 seats in Congress. This is one of the maybe only a couple of seats where you've got a, a Democrat in the, the seat right now and there's a legitimate opportunity for that to switch to Republican and, and be a, a minor change in the direction of our country, which I think is needed. And uh, I'm really running because uh, I think we need to get our financial house in order and the things that we've been doing for the last 20 or 30 years in our country is not uh, taking us in the right direction. When I went to college, the national debt was $1 trillion. Today, it's almost 20. And so this is an opportunity for people in this district um, to embrace someone like me that uh, knows how the business world works, has balanced budgets in a, in a business setting for 30 years, but also has a proven record of getting things done in public offices. The last time the state of Arizona budget was balanced without a bunch of accounting tricks and gimmicks um, until recently was nine or ten years ago. And that's when I was president of the Senate. And I not only got 15 of the 17 Republicans in the Senate to support those balanced budgets, we got 11 of the 13 Democrats. So uh, it gives people an opportunity to embrace somebody who has real world business experience, but also a proven record of getting things done and bringing people together and putting the interest of the state and of our country ahead of either political parties or other special interests. We've got to get our financial house in order and quit borrowing from our children and our grandchildren. Um, being so high north in the state, are border issues still a priority for you? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, th the th three top priorities that I talk about is getting our financial house in order, getting our economy growing, and getting Americans back to work, and keeping our country safe. And keeping our country safe is both at home and abroad. And at home, it means uh, sealing and securing the border, making sure that people that c come into our country are coming in through the front door and not sneaking in the back door. Uh, and because the ones that are, you know, many of the ones that I think are, are sneaking in now are doing it for very different reasons than they might have done it 20, 30 years ago when it was almost all people looking for work. Now we've got uh, issues of terrorism and and things that um, I think put our country at tremendous risk unless we can seal and secure the border. And talk to me a little bit about job growth. Well, uh, growing the economy is very, very important. Um, I just heard some numbers released today that I think Barack Obama will be the first president in the history, uh, or in the recent history, the last 100, 120 years, that didn't have at least one year while he or she was president where economic growth was above 3%. So we've got to get the economy growing. We've got, to, we've got more people out of the workforce in America than we ever have as a country. We've got more people on food stamps and other welfare type programs. We've got to get people back to work. We've got to get government out of the way so that businesses can grow and thrive and create more jobs and grow the wages uh, of the jobs that they do have. 
so that people can be contributing and paying a little bit in to the tax system instead of taking out all the time. And we've got to get Americans back to work and securing the border is even part of that so that Americans aren't having to compete with uh, illegal workers. And what else needs to be done to get Americans back to work? What specifically needs to change? Well, I think we need to lower and flatten our tax uh, code. Uh, we need to get uh, rules and regulations that government has uh, put in um, that crush business jobs. In fact, I just heard uh, today in the media that uh, someone added up the major new regulations that have been added during this last administration of President Obama, and a new reg or a major uh, regulation is one that's defined as costing over one hundred million dollars, and there are something like six hundred and ninety-four new regulations that have been put in in the last seven or seven and a half years. And so if you add that up, that's almost um, three quarters of a trillion dollars of new regulations that have been added within just the last seven or eight years. And each of those, or many of those regulations, I think make it harder for businesses to grow and create jobs. And I think we have a, a lot of people that uh, are receiving welfare or benefit type programs because they can't find work. And if we can grow the economy and, and get those folks, or many of them, back into jobs, then they can be, instead of taking money out of the federal uh, treasury, they can be helping to contribute. So reducing regulations, lowering and flattening our, our tax code, um, getting rid of all kinds of job-killing regulations like Dodd-Frank and I think um, uh, the health, you know, Bo Obamacare has, you know, caused businesses to only employ people for certain hours during, the, you know, no more than so many hours a week. Or uh, there's just lots of uh, inadvertent consequences of of regulations that are killing jobs. Uh, talk to me a little bit about education. Uh, education is very important to me. Uh, our three children were educated in the, the public school system up in the Prescott area. Uh, it's the largest single expenditure within the state budget, uh, but it should not be a significant uh, expenditure at the federal level. There's nothing in the U.S. Constitution that, that delegates a responsibility about education to the federal government. And I think, in my opinion, what I'm going to work for is to make sure that the, the funding for and the, uh, the authorization and the, the things that are needed to help make education better needs to happen at the state and local level and not be dictated to us by Washington. So I'm a fan of local control and making sure that the federal government is not trying to make every state in the country look like each other or dictate to the state um, how to run their education system. So I want that to be a state and local issue. And um, talk to me a little bit about what do you think makes you stand out from some of your competitors? Well, oftentimes what I say makes me stand out is two numbers, 16,000 and 40 billion. 16,000 is the number of paychecks I estimate that I signed during the 24 years I ran our family business. 40 billion is the number of is the amount of the state budgets that I balanced when I was Senate president for four years. So I have a proven record of being able to get things done in the business world, but also get things done uh, in a government position. And I feel so, so strongly about needing to get our financial house in order and balancing the federal budget that I've made a promise uh, to the voters of this district. I think we can get the federal budget balanced in four years using a plan called the Penny Plan. It's not my original idea. It came from a congressman in Florida. Uh, but the idea is correct, and that is if you cut spending by just 1% a year for four years and get the economy growing at the normal rate that it has grown at for the last 30 or 40 years, the federal budget can be balanced in four years. And I've made a promise or a pledge, I call it the Bennett Budget Pledge, that if, if I can't help get the federal budget balanced in six years, then I will not seek re-election. I'll come home and we'll elect somebody else to try it. But I think we can get it done in four years. And I think, I think the people deserve um, almost like a guarantee or a promise that uh, somebody's going to go back there and get something done and not just go back there and be a career politician. That's not what I'm interested in. I'd rather be back here playing with my three little grandsons than back in Washington for an extended period of time. So I've made a promise that we get the budget balanced in six years 
or I won't seek re-election, but I think we can do it in four years. Do you think, uh, looking back on your time as Secretary of State in Arizona, um, that that's going to help you um, in your you know, journey for Congress? Well, all of the experience I've had, whether it was 30 years in business or the 15 or 16 years in public service, including the Secretary of State office, will help me. Um, during my six years as Secretary of State, the economy had just gone down and the state, the state legislature cut a lot of state agencies' budgets quite significantly. The Secretary of State's office budget was cut by over 20, almost 25 percent. And yet during that two years that we had to absorb a 25 percent cut, we cross-trained the employees that we were able to keep. We didn't fire anybody, but as people left, we went from 180 employees down to below 140, but we cross-trained those employees to make sure that everybody could do two or three jobs, whatever it took, and we got the, we got the job done in less time with 25% less people, um, and we improved customer service during the same time. So if I go back to Congress and say, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a 1% cut in federal programs or agencies, having been there and been responsible for a state agency that had to absorb a 20 plus percent cut, I think will give us, give me some of the credibility that we need to say, yeah, we can cut the federal budget by one or two percent because I proved that we could do it at state level over 20 percent. Um, going back to border issues, mm -hmm. um, people often say, you know, we, just, we need to secure the border and as you mentioned, you know, terrorism is a bigger deal now. Uh, what specifically needs to be done that enable or to be able to secure the border? Well, one of the things we've got to do is get more resources to the Border Patrol uh, and let them do their job. I have visited with many Border Patrol agents during the time that I was either Senate President or Secretary of State. And as recently as just a few weeks ago when I ran into one in, in Graham County down in Safford and Thatcher. And I asked him, what do you think we need to do? And he said, get us more resources and let us do our job. And that's what I agree with. I asked him, I said, well, how short are you on the resources? He says, well, we have about 290 personnel in my section. I said, well, how many should you have? He says, we're short 300. So they're barely half of what they really need. So getting more uh, agents, getting those agents on the border. Uh, yes, there are some places where we need to build a barrier, uh, but it's, it's not as simplistic as just you know, building a wall or a fence. Uh, one thing we've got to do is fix our legal immigration system. Over half of the illegals in the country now came legally but overstayed visas and things like that. So we've got to fix the legal immigration system, or sometimes what I call the front door. Uh, I think the principles of being good neighbors um, between countries are the same principles as being good neighbors on a street. If a neighbor wants to visit, they call ahead. They come to your front door and you greet them and welcome them in, welcome them in and have dinner or play games or whatever you do, and then they go back out the front door and go home. A good neighbor doesn't hop over your backyard fence and break into your garage and live out of your freezer. So we've got to fix the front door mechanism, our legal immigration system, so that the people that are coming in uh, stay here for the right time and go back when they're supposed to and, and obey our laws and pay taxes and do the things that they're supposed to do instead of getting lost in the shuffle. And then we turn around every 10 or 20 years and there's 11 or 12 million illegals in the country. Uh, any other message you want to send out to voters um, if you were elected, <laughs> what, what you would change, what are your main priorities? You mentioned well, the, the three main priorities for me, we, we've got to get our financial house in order. We can balance the federal budget. I believe it can be done using this penny plan idea in four years. We've got to quit borrowing from our children and grandchildren, and we've got to stop the hundreds of billions of dollar payments uh, to China and other people that are, uh, that are loaning us money. We've got to get the economy growing get Americans back to work, and we've got to keep our country safe. And keeping our country safe includes at home, securing the border, but also strengthening our military, keeping our promises to veterans, uh, strength, you know, fixing the VA system, and doing things so that our military can be the, the strongest in the world. Forty percent of our planes can't fly because they don't have parts. We're not going to be able to afford to secure the border, strengthen our military, keep our promises to seniors and veterans, uh, if we don't have our financial house in order. So that's job one.